So hi and a very good morning to those who are in Malaysia and good afternoon and, and evening for those who are on the, on the other side of the planet. Welcome. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you to the, to, the, to the event today. This is day two of CBC Community Builders uh, Conference, the flagship program under GLOBS, Global Community Builders Summit, uh, with the theme that unlocking the soul of community builders, achieving sustainable development goals. And the program today is co-organized by Isla International Islamic University Malaysia, IIUM, together with uh, Phil and Dior, and supported by United Nations, uh, CSO's SDG Alliance, and also all party parliament parliamentary group Malaysia, APPGM. And I would like to uh, uh, suggest and help uh, out these events to reach more people by, share, by liking the page GLOBS and also share to this event to your friends and uh, relatives. So if you look at uh, today's uh, schedule, we have a very interesting speakers from uh, policymakers and from, from those who are the community builders and movers. Uh, and we're going to talk today, this morning, with uh, Associate Professor Dr. Zainal Abidin Sanusi, who is the Director of Sejahtera Centre. Welcome, Doctor. How are you? Uh, welcome. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Okay. Assalamualaikum. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Good. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and today's the topic is going to be very specific uh, regarding your expertise, uh, which is oh, not really. <laughs> goal and also the very niche area that uh, UIA or IAUM has been focusing for a few uh, years already, which is Sejahtera SDG. And uh, one of the things that I, I realized when I came into the campus just now, I, I saw a, a signboard uh, stating that Greater Gomba. And oh, I was informed okay. that it was a recognition by United Nations regional center for excellence and i think many of the community builders uh, not only in malaysia but also across the globe would like to know what is actually this addition uh, a name called sejahtera for sdg is there anything deeper that you are looking into sustainable development goals by united nation so i would uh, we would like to give the floor to you for an hour we want to explore and understand how actually uh, the idea and the implementation is being uh, bring forth. Uh, ah. is yours, Doctor. Oh, all right, thank you. Uh, sorry, I missed the name. Uh, My name oh. is Azlan Shah, sorry. Azlan, sorry, yeah, okay. You have an hour. I thought it's only half an hour. We give you, we are generous with our time. With okay, you. all right. Maybe I pick, do we have Q&A or just a talk? I mean, it's just one hour you, talk. You can have some session and then we can open for Q&A. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll take half an hour and then we can do more. To, interactive session. Can we do that? Yeah, I would suggest. Okay. okay, Aslan, thank you so much. Yeah, and then thank you for highlighting the, 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 the key word of RCE that is uh, now uh, being put in the campus, uh, which I think, uh, well, I, let me put my uh, slide on first. Yeah. Okay, uh, which is very critical because uh, it makes a lot of difference. Uh, what it means here is, uh, the, 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 the recognition that we get uh, from the United Nations University is actually a recognition of what we've been practicing. Sorry, uh, it's not what I meant to share. Okay. Okay. Um, this recognition is actually a recognition of what we've been doing. Yeah, as well, it's not something that we know, uh, especially if you see it from community perspective, is a recognition of how much work that we have done on uh, working together with the community and working together with the community within the spirit of our own uh, need and interest, not only just as reflections of why suddenly uh, SDG, yeah, Sustainable Development Goal. So SDG for us is not something very new in terms of concept and practice. It is something that has been practiced, especially for the Muslim. Yeah, It's been long, long, even during the Prophet times already. So that you and you, uh, that signage of RCE Greater Gombat means that UIA now is a secretary of a community of practitioners, a community of uh, professionals who are working together uh, between the universities and the community, right? Uh, and then why uh, UIA? Because UIA for the past, what? Our existence for the past 30 years has been working on this, yeah? So here is a good opportunity for us to showcase and highlight that what we have been doing. And at ultimately, uh, as Malaysia and as Muslim, this is a platform that uh, for us to really showcase uh, uh, the concept that we believe in 
and the practice that we've been doing, although this, there might be some, some uh, loops, uh, room of improvement here and there. Yeah? Okay, let me start with a bit of like uh, introduction and sharing. Uh, this is just through a concept uh, uh, that is, is, is a fundamental uh, in our university now, yeah? uh, together with Islamizations, Falsafah Pendidikan, uh, SDG, and the, the, the UNESCO Pillars of Learning. These are the four concepts that is very critical. And we term all these four into a framework of sejahtera. Yeah? This is something new, uh, new in terms of like a keyword try to bring this thing together. But the spirit, as well, yeah, the spirit, the practice is, is the same thing that we've been doing. Yeah? We just matter of tweaking here and there so that we can be very proud. We can have our own showcase of how do we localize the sustainable development goal into our own context and, and, and background. Yeah? So that is the background, that is the rationale behind why do we have sejahtera yeah? uh, as, as a keyword. And why I was proposing uh, when we talk about the organizing this conference, I thought let's put up the sejahtera and see how far can it go. Yeah? Because it's very important that we have this concept. Yeah? And so we'll talk about two parts of the you need, know, a bit of conceptual uh, uh, background of the what's the Jatu, and then the application part of it. And then we can maybe take questions from that. All right. So Jatra is a very common word. Yeah? Every day, every people, every citizens of Malaysia, I think by no exception, uh, they have heard about the word Jatra. They have been practicing, they have been saying it many times a day, yeah? salam sejahtera, salam sejahtera, and, and uh, in many occasions, and you've seen around, even clinic sejahtera, you see so many words of sejahtera being tagged with other, with other entities. But now what we'd like to do is that somehow, is it possible for us to somehow bring this concept, give a, a lift to it, and frame it as an interesting concept of living? Yeah, a concept of living that, that encapsulates not only uh, sejahtera as a physical thing, but sejahtera as a spiritual thing. Yeah? Because uh, as Muslim, yeah, this is very important, this is very critical that we portray our sejahtera nurse, if there is a concept of that, well beingness, uh, not only uh, in terms of ourselves, I mean, for ourselves, but also to add the external entities that we are dealing with. Yeah? But uh, be before we get into that, let's, let's talk about the definition, of, which I think I purposely put in Malay, yeah? because the, the zook, the feeling is not the same, we put in English. Yeah? The usual translations of, 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 of sejahtera in English will be well-being. Yeah? But it doesn't really uh, capture the actual spirit of the word sejahtera. Yeah? The sejahtera means it's beyond that well-being. Yeah? Because, um, kalau, kalau, uh, sorry, uh, if, if it's in, in, in Malay, the, the, if we try to define sejahtera, it would be aman, sentosa, and makmur, and selamat, and all those words that come together with you, harmonious, and etc. Yeah? So uh, for, for that, if we talk about sejahtera community, the community that have that component, yeah? there is aman, there is, uh, what? how do I put that in English? There is peace, there is harmonious, there is uh, no crime, there is tranquility, serenity. So all those similar synonym word is, uh, is the meaning of sejahtera. Yeah? So it cannot just be simplified into the word well-being. That's why I purposely put this in, in Malay so that the actual uh, semantics to it comes together with that. Yeah? So if you talk about uh, sejahtera community, it means that all the, the community that is uh, having a focus on this and grounded and founded on this component. Yeah? And secondly, it's very important yeah, uh, that uh, our, as an international Islamic university, while we speak the language of universal, but uh, it's founded, it's grounded in a very strong convictions and, and uh, on what, what the Islamic teaching is, yeah, from Islamic, from his religious, not, not only Islam, but all religions is talking of referring and, and aspiring yeah, and advocating about the same concept, the same components that need to be there. Yeah? Again, uh, peace, uh, tranquility, uh, and harmony, uh, comfort, yeah, uh, and caring, compassions, humanities, so the same. So no other, no religion is not pushing for that. No religion is not advocating for that, yeah? But in Islam, what it goes beyond that concept of uh, harmonious and, 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 and peace and etc. is that at the end, our sejahtera, our well-being is not defined solely 
in this world. Yeah, all this, uh, all this component is at the end to bring us the eternal uh, well-beingness, eternal sejahtera. Yeah, eternal sejahtera is during, uh, I mean, in, in the akhirah. Yeah? yeah, and 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 for this, the implications of this concept, the implications of this meaning is that it has to be translated into our actions. Yeah, it's not just something of rhetoric that we talk about. Okay, since Islam is still talking about sejahtera, but it remains that no. Yeah. The challenge is that how do we translate that in the context of uh, contemporary issues, like even in the context of climate change, even in the context of how do we address poverty? Yeah, it's not just because remember, uh, it, maybe it's easier for me if, if we highlight that sejahtera is defined. I mean, it can be seen in Islam. If you are sejahtera with God, yeah, hablu min Allah, and if you are sejahtera with fellow human being, hablu min an nas, and if you fail, if you are sejahtera with the of, with your surroundings, yeah, hablu minal 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 ala, yeah. So means that if you are with surrounding is happy, because you cannot uh, spread the message of sejahtera if you yourself within yourself is not sejahtera. So I would sum up from this perspective that sejahtera, what it means here is that uh, the harmony that you have between you and the environment, you and the people, your your peer, and you and Allah subhanahu wa taala ultimately, yeah. So that, that is the concept of sejahtera. And, 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 and for that, I think uh, Prof. Kamal, our respected uh, ex-rector and also scholar, yeah, our respected uh, intellectual that we always refer to. So he come up uh, with a, a simpler way of trying to convey the message that when we talk about sejahtera in our context, how does it relate to sustainable development is that the component, the very basic meanings of sejahtera is exactly the foundations. Yeah, uh, some of them. So of course, there is some exception to it. Expect the, the, the foundation that is needed for us to achieve that sustainable development goal. Without that component of sejahtera, we would not be able to get there. Yeah. So here, uh, usually we would tend to translate. I mean, to, to translate sejahtera as uh, I mean, uh, uh, as salam. Yeah, uh, salam as sejahtera. But uh, Prof Kamal defined that sejahtera. From Islamic perspective, it's not just uh, uh, happiness. Yeah, it's al falah. Yeah, al falah means kejayaan, and this uh, kejayaan is not just kejayaan di dunia, but kejayaan di arah, which is more important. Yeah, and the opposite. In order to give more meanings to that, in trying to understand it, is that al the opposite of sejahtera is sengsara. So the Arabic terms would be al husran. Yeah. So then we can see the, the contradictions of, uh, of, I mean, the contradictory uh, component elements against harmony, etc. So that is not sejahtera and sejahtera. So what we're pushing for is that now within the universities and also our, our advocacy, our discussion and interaction with the people outside is that can this component then become the foundation for us to have our own narrative our own way, our own framework of promoting, implementing sustainable development goal. Yeah. So that is the premise. That is the most important concept. Why sejahtera? We are interested in putting in the sejahtera. For example, in my uh, in the office that I work with, yeah, I work for, the office name is Sejahtera Center for Sustainability and Humanity. It's a very important message there because we don't want just to promote sustainability as to how maybe you can see in, in other occasion or in other uh, office in, in other countries, yeah, but we want to include the local flavor to it, the component of sejahtera. So that is why it's purposely in put that the word sejahtera center for sustainability rather than you can simply name this a sustainability center. Why? Because we want this, uh, the, the local contact and more important, the Muslim perspective to it without us marginalizing any, 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 any perspective, yeah. And of course, uh, this is very much what translate, what need to be manifested as our Tawhidic or Tawhid uh, component when we talk about uh, sejahtera from Islamic perspective, or from Muslim, yeah, uh, where the role of uh, uh, the eternal is one. But finally, our ultimate submission to God is the most fundamental judgment, whether that is sejahtera or not. All right, so th that's the foundation, Aslan. So, so now let me go directly, yeah, quickly to the application part, yeah, because uh, we can be very rhetorical here. It's not an, uh, it's a new concept that we try to push actually, yeah, we meaning that we're pushing something, whether it can be feasible, whether it can be acceptable, yeah. Uh, surprisingly, yeah, uh, when when we were talking about this, yeah, when I was in the US and different university before in Science Malaysia, 
that word sejahtera uh, was heard by a group of Korean, yeah, South Korean, and then looking at the meanings and comparing their, their way of living, their concept of living, their purpose of living, they got interested about it. Yeah? They got interested in the meaning of sejahtera and how the application of sejahtera. So what happened is that they take it home. And they take the concept of sejahtera home and establish their own sejahtera center that cost 20 million US dollar. And, and that, uh, that, that, that sejahtera center is now visited and become popular uh, by this Korean. So they got their sejahtera forest, they got their sejahtera scholarship. So you will see that the other, well, outsiders are so much appreciative of, of our concept, but we ourselves is not that uh, uh, confidence yeah, in promoting the concept as a way of living. Yeah? And then uh, you will see that um, the, the, the other picture is that how we try to mainstream this and Alhamdulillah, yeah, by, by now, inshallah, we've got more people uh, convinced in the agenda, agenda in a way that as, as, as an argument for us to put forward uh, as a concept of our own uh, local narrative when we want to translate uh, sustainable development in our own context. Yeah? Because it's important that we not just uh, adopt directly whatever that comes from outside. And that, that, that's not the spirit here. The spirit of Sejahtera is that to adjust here and there, and at the same time to prove to them, to prove to those who introduced that concept to us, the concept of the SDG that we're talking about here, is that we have our own concept. And it works so far. If you look at this Salam Sejahtera, Kampus Sejahtera, it works. It works in achieving SDG, right? Uh, so, and, and what more if we bring it to the context of, of, of education? What kind of education? So here we talk about, uh, in, 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 in UIA, for example, we talk about curriculum, yeah? Sejahtera Academic Framework. We're talking about Insan Sejahtera Pedagogy, right? So this is how we translate. This is how we push into practice because we don't want to be seen as rhetoric. We don't want to just be seen as cliche and concept that stands at the high level, the 2000 feedback cannot be translated. Yeah? So what we're doing here is that try to put meanings to it, try to give more meat to the word and see how it can be operationalized. At the end, how can it be used? How can it be made popular? How can it be accepted by the public and the world as to how Sudhattara is already, I mean, Korea is already practicing it into uh, a means of achieving sustainable development goal. Yeah. All right, and a bit more deeper, a bit more conceptual. I, I will try to avoid uh, to be uh, too uh, conceptual here. But uh, in one way, in UIA, I think industry rector and, uh, and few of them is trying to somehow project an argument that when we talk about sustainable development, we talk about localizing development at local level means that you we really have to give strong focus, strong emphasis on how the local people will be resilient at the end, will be sustainable at the end. So if they are to be uh, forced to, uh, to, to accept or to receive a concept or a principles or, or values that come from outside, definitely will not be sustainable. Yeah? So here, what uh, the article is trying to argue is that the concept of sustainable development, in a way, in a way, is is one way of trying to somehow decolonize. Yeah, it might be a strong word to certain contexts. Yeah, but uh, decolonize here is that we are not receiving, we are not just directly adopting the definitions of development as to how it's given uh, from outside. Yeah, from other countries. So we've got our own way. We've got our own way of tweaking and 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 adapting it yeah, uh, to, to, to our own context. So this is why it goes back to when we want to introduce, when we want to somehow emphasize and mainstream on sejahtera as a local concept, what do we highlight then? So the values that I was mentioning just now, the definition of sejahtera, at the same time, an important component as to how to give meat and to operational values to the word sejahtera is the indigenous knowledge. Yeah, the kind of knowledge, the kind of practice that we have, the kind of uh, uh, living, yeah? the kind of uh, gotong royong, for example, and then how we appreciate or run as the traditional knowledge. They have kept the environment very, very good conditions. Yeah? So, so th this is the kind of component that we need to highlight, that we need to push forward, that we need to somehow mainstream and practice it back. Yeah? So this is how we operationalize the concept of sejahtera. Yeah. So 
again and again is is trying to highlight that we've got we've got it in our self already. We got in our society. We got in our community, right? We not to deny the 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 the, the significance and the importance of SDG as to how we're being exposed to, but let's push for our own local agenda. Let's push for our own concept so that you will be uh, very uh, funny, uh, interesting to see how how we have already that concept, yeah. And this is a further explanation to how in detail, yeah. Uh, it happens is the I'll get the next slide, like, yeah. All right. So in this article, what is actually being discussed is that to confess and to give a literature as to how the uh, origins of the word is Jatra, yeah, the indigenous concept in the Malay archipelago. Yeah, it is there. So I've, I've said it already. Yeah? It is there. It's not only Malaysia. It's also in Indonesia, for example, at least in Selatan Thai and Selatan Philippine. Yeah, it's a Dusantara. The word Jatra is a very strong word. But somehow it is not being made popular. Yeah? I'm very sad to see the South Korea is already picking it up yeah, ahead of us. Yeah, and then the second component that is being uh, highlighted uh, in this in this uh, academic uh, article is that the word balance, well-being, yeah? prosperity, peace, and truth, which which already highlighted. Yeah, and uh, the third component that is also important is more of reiteration what I've said just now is that coexistence of common shared values and prosperity. Yeah. Uh, if you talk about uh, SDG 16 and 17, yeah? partnership, strong peace and justice. So imagine if Sejahtera is put as strong component of how to achieve SDG 16 and 17. Yeah? Because we talk about common values, we talk about prosperity, we talk about gotong royong. So these are the foundation that's been there. So our 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 battle is just to convince those people out there that this is something that we've got already, yeah. And and also this is something that also goes internally and externally, yeah. So maknanya, uh, if, if SDG, some people see SDG is not so much into internal thing, yeah, into the spirituality part. But our sejahtera is somehow highlighting the component of the uh, external uh, factors, yeah. I'm sorry, internal factor, the spirituality part. This is one of the critics. Yeah. So Sejahtera uh, is an alternative, is, a, is an offer so that we include the component of religion, we include the component of values, we include the component of spirituality in achieving SDG or in advocating what needs to be done in order for us to achieve sustainable development. Yeah? And this is for the illustrations. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not that I, I am I'm too much of, the, of this person. Yeah, but so far, given it's a new topic, yeah, uh, this is the literature that is available. Meaning that these are the, the discourse, the discussions that is available for us to refer to. Yeah, uh, and and interesting, Aslan. I think the other thing that I, I would like to highlight here is that if other countries, yeah, can sell to the world concept of ikigai in Japan, for example, yeah, and then uh, Swedish can sell to the world their concept of living of lagom, yeah. And the Kore, uh, the and, and the Danish and Norwegian can sell to the world their sustainable concept of living through the word of Hige or Huga, since what I was uh, pronounced, yeah. Uh, and and the South Korean got Nunchi, and the uh, South African is very well known for its concept of Ubuntu, yeah. So here, what we would like to highlight is that the concept of Sejahtera. It's more or less a like concept, yeah, a similar concept for us. So we've got to have our own convictions and confidence in, in showing and, and pushing for uh, Sejahtera as a way as to how the other words have been sold around the world. Yeah. Uh, though we, we alhamdulillah, we, we've got a small book uh, written by the writer yeah, on Sejahtera, but we hope to write a good one of the similar uh, uh, influence like all the other concepts around the world. Yeah. So it means here is that we've got it there. Yeah. This is a matter of us trying to put meat to it. Yeah. And it, a, a bit of sophistication of this thing, yeah? uh, trying to somehow, you know, academic, sometimes we like to make it a bit more sophisticated to so-called give, give, give values to this, yeah? values in academic values. Yeah? So, this is a component. Yeah, we've got the ethical component, you've got the spiritual component, you've got the emotional component of Sejahtera. Yeah, and then you will see that, uh, okay, uh, a further uh, dimensions to it is that it's, 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 it's not just emotion, it's not just emotion, it's not just values. Yeah, 
is is a cognitive part where where the 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 the, the, the technical knowledge the intellectual and the physical psychological part as well so it is very comprehensive in a way that for you to spread the message of jatra you your we ourselves internally have to somehow internalize all this component all this aspect then only we can spread the message yeah to the uh, economic aspect to the cultural aspect to the societal aspect to the ecological aspect yeah so this diagram i mean this is from the rector as well yeah? uh is to somehow illustrate that if you put in remember the diagram of sustainable development where you've got the economics the social and the environment so it's the same thing okay? it's the same uh, illustration as to how at the crux of the thing at the heart of the thing at the center of the thing is that we need to be sejahtera yeah so the balance the word balance is referring that sejahtera and that sejahtera is actually making sure that our economic development is not at the price of ecological disruptions it's not at the price of some people being depressed or being marginalized culturally or socially yeah so sejahtera meaning that we try to find the balance between all the four component so if you talk about sd sustainable development between the three component yeah okay and 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 this very much uh, aligned with the concept of of uh, with the makosid sharia uh, uh, framework that uh, that we are talking about as well as an islamic university uh, and as a muslim as well of course yeah uh, the concept of makosid is so much underlying into our uh, discussions on sustainable development yeah it goes so much well together and of course except with some for the for the an emphasis that need to be there so we got the five um, uh, apa ni uh, five makosid syarat there is the life yeah hifz uh, nafs yeah hifz akal hifz mal uh, sorry hifz hifz nafs yeah hifz mal and hifz deed yeah so all these five in sejahtera you need to make sure that our religion is sejahtera our heart our our works is sejahtera means we need to have uh, properties as well for for our family for our siblings and etc yeah and we've got to take care of the uh, our our progeny yeah our our family uh, line yeah and of course our intellect and our own life has to be sustainable so here you see there's no con- there's no contradictions if we talk about sejahtera it jack very well the concept of uh, the islamic teachings the makos syariah and the sdg so what more can you ask for i mean if you talk about the ikigai the other concept they may not be necessarily able to reflect the same thing yeah? but in in, in sejahtera alhamdulillah we can find the similarities we can find there's a lot of commonalities for us to push forward that is so it jiving well so it is not contradict in our belief and actions yeah so okay that, that that's the, that's the conceptual part and also a bit of like uh, the semantics and the 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 the, 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 the epistemology part of okay. it now let let's bring yeah the last 10 5 minutes let, let the 5 10 minutes let, let me bring to the actual implementation of this thing, yeah uh as well i think uh, we always i mean in my classroom i always remind them i always start, tell them that look around and see where are the words jatter that you see so one of them come up with, from klantan yeah he saw the word uh, sejahtera somewhere in the pasar siti khadijah and it's referring to a tanda sejahtera right so i'm not trying to make jokes make fun of the word tandas but then it, it encompass from the very basic need of human being to the highest level of 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 of, of uh, living yeah frame of, frame of living component of living yeah so it get uh, from that uh, component it get to clinic sejahtera for the health part kedah sejahtera is famous for that it get selayang uh the tech line of the city the city council is that mapat progressive and sejahtera and if you talk about pas and one of the ruling party now is that they've got this uh trengganu they've got this gagasan sejahtera and i kind of what being a political science student so uh, the 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 malaysia sejahtera manifesto is another illustrations as to how the potential or the convictions on the concept of sejahtera is beyond just salam sejahtera yeah it can be penetrative it can be inclusive into a more complex and sophisticated uh, way of pushing living way of pushing economic agenda social agenda and environmental preservations yeah so here what i'm trying to illustrate is that the strong potential not only potential is already being done yeah 
uh, on practice. And and Alhamdulillah, yeah, in, in, in the center we are organizing with Dialectica, yeah, uh, for every week for the past twenty three weeks. Every Thursday night, a bit of promotions as then if you allow me. Yeah, every week we are discussing at nine to 10 p.m. every night, uh, no, every week on Thursday night, the topic that try to relate the concept of Sejatra, trying to operationalize the concept of Sejatra in all aspects of life. Yeah, uh, between uh, the between religions, yeah, the first one, agenda sejahtera and SDG, what is the commonality, and then our rector talks about sejahtera as a model, as a development model, right? And then sejahtera at primary school and Prof Kamal gives Islamic perspective of sejahtera, and then Tansri Zul come again, yeah, and give uh, the first half of pendidikan something that is has been neglected a bit, and then uh, there's a group of our youth. Uh, the, the student union come in to see how sejahtera concept being practiced, being uh, convicted in, among the students, how they put into actions. So this is just six of it, but we've gone through like 22 sessions of sejahtera and blah, blah, blah. Yeah? Meaning that we are putting this very serious effort so that we can really concretize the concept of sejahtera. In this aspect, maybe how to achieve sustainable development goal. Yeah? And then what we also see is that um, in actions, yeah, uh, if we talk about SDG, each of that 17 component can easily be founded uh, based on the Sejahtera approach and framework. Okay, all right. And, 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 and more interestingly is that you want to uplift the, the, the level of discourse to a, a bit more complicated development model. Yeah, you see from uh, the uh, WKB or Sanko Mahat Moran Prasama or SPV, Shared Prosperity Visions, the word sejahtera is used as a translation of well-being as one of the important part of the, uh, the, the development plan. Yeah, And if you see um, my, my, my last slide, yeah? if you see from even, even in 2019 budget, it's already talking about kesejahteraan rakyat yeah? with the word well-being. And this year, I mean next year, yeah? next year, 2021, that very word of sejahtera is solidly, explicitly put as one of the three pillar of the Belanjawan Punya objective and goals. Yeah, kejahteraan rakyat, economy, and class organ. So the well-beingness of people, yeah, economics resilience and continuity of business. Yeah. So here, I think what I can conclude is that from the very simple concept that we've been uh, iterating every day, salam sejahtera, yeah, and then etc., to the highest level of, 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 of complexity and sophisticated, sophisticatedness of, of development concept, we can somehow put in sejahtera in. Yeah? So it's a matter of how we mainstream it, how we make more people convinced to it, and finally, how we put meat, how we operationalize the fundamental that defines sejahtera into a practical aspect of life. There is a social aspect, economic aspect, and the environmental aspect. Yeah. So now uh, I would like to conclude by saying that um, you've seen from the beginning, yeah, uh, you may start small, yeah, but Alhamdulillah, so far, if we try to put all these apps, all these groups together, yeah, because in UIA, now uh, the word sejahtera is like a uh, daily mantra, yeah, and you see it everywhere. Even my sejahtera sometimes confuse yeah, for being my sejahtera as well. Yeah, they thought that I'm doing my sejahtera. No, it's nothing to do with that. But because it's so popular, that everyone is referring to sejahtera, right? So, so with that, uh, Aslan, I, I would like to end my, uh, I mean, my sharing uh, of how uh, sejahtera as a concept to reflect not only uh, our local concept, but local concept that includes the perspective as a Muslim, which is the most important one. Yeah. So, inshallah, hopefully that will give some ideas for us to discuss to follow up with further discussions on this. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Um, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. I think uh, this is very heavy stuff and it does flex my brain muscles so much. And uh, I think uh, even our participants are still processing and trying to uh, digest so many of this uh, depth of the concept. I would like to ask a few questions at first. Uh, if we see from the very beginning, it implied like uh, as SDG, uh, sustainable Development Goal by the United Nations might be implemented in the implementation. It could be uh, twisted or being being attached to some other concept. I mean, every community have their own uh, uh, 
a philosophy, or have their own concept. Is, does that mean that, for example, other countries or even some other communities in Malaysia could have maybe a Budi SDG or maybe something else put on together with SDG and it is something being celebrated by the United Nations as well? Yes, uh, if we talk about um, in general first, yeah, my response in general is that uh, uh, were you saying Budi, B-U-D-I or Buddhist? Budi, B-U-D-I. Budi, okay, all right, okay. So the very fundamental essence of sustainable development and growth is that to localize, as I was saying in the beginning, yeah? Localize means if you want to localize, you've got to make use of the culture that is existing in that local culture. Means the capital that is there, whether it's natural, whether it's natural capital, social capital, or, or, or financial capital that is existing in that particular society or in that particular community. So SDG is in that spirit. It means that they've got to how do I say? Uh, empower, empower the local strength, empower the local culture. So that's the whole argument of Statra. We believe in that, uh, it means that SDG is giving rooms for that. I mean, the local culture has to be the foundations for the achievement of that sustainable development goal. How far it reached the goal is based on how far the local culture is being the component, is being the platform to translate that agenda. So it does, yes, to answer your question, it does recognize that. Yeah, but what is missing? What is my, my contention here is that what is missing is that our own convictions in our own culture or, or self esteem, jati diri, yeah, in Malay word, our own jati diri of our own concept, either the Islamic uh, way of life or even the Malay, uh, the Muslim or, or the Malaysian way of life, which is there. But because we are so much uh, exposed and believe in the Western way of of, of living and Western way of solving the environmental problems, responsible consumptions and productions. Uh, we don't see our own culture as something that can be used as a platform for us to achieve that SDG, right? So in short, what I'm trying to say is that yes, SDG recognize that. The concern, the, the challenge is that how do we make our own people convinced that our own way of life, our own way, eh, not the westernized way, not the not the not the not the tainted, not the corrupted way of living, or because of following the Western way. So our own way uh, is the way that should be uh, led uh, to move forward in order for us to achieve that sustainable development goal. All right, doctor. I guess uh, there is a lot of uh, non-profits, uh, foundations, and also maybe uh, education institutions who might be very interested to to embrace Sejahtera SDG. As for now, they are very familiar or learning about SDG, but maybe this is for the first time they have heard like, oh, there is a Jatra SDG. So how how might they get contact or get involved in this uh, in this special niche area of what is being proposed by IUM? I would say. Yeah, uh, remember when you mentioned the RCE, the, uh, the Regional Centre of Expertise, Greater Gomba. So this is a consortium already of like 20 NGOs who are working with us already on this concept Sejahtera. Because in that RCE, there are three uh, aspects to it. There are three niche areas. One is Sejahtera, definitely. Yeah. Second is a whole community transformation because we thought that we need to transform the whole society, the whole community uh, uh, way of living and where we are working with the others, yeah? And the last one is uh, spirituality, yeah? Uh, so spirituality being UIA, so it's the third component, yeah? Uh, not giving it hierarchy, but this is a component of, uh, that is important for us to highlight. So what I would like to highlight is that those who are interested, please, you are most welcome to join this RCE and not only getting into the subject, but also if you join us in this original center of expertise is that, this uh, a recognition because it's a network that is being recognized by United Nations University with that UN logo. Uh, and then you are together in a global consortium of 174 regional center of expertise around the world who are working on sustainable development. So meaning that it gives advantage to you as a business people or as, as NGOs that you have access, imagine 174 regional center of expertise around the world. Yeah, each part of the world, I think, in, in all the continents, There's Latin America, we've got uh, in Europe, you get in America, uh, in the United States, you get in Australia, New Zealand, you, everywhere, South Africa. So you have an access and network to all 174 uh, other members who are working for the similar benefits, similar, similar agenda. 
All right, I have another question, but I would like to invite our participants, the viewers that uh, following the discussion from the beginning or even just join us to put forth your questions on the comments. Uh, if, if we go back to what uh, Dr. said just now, you said yeah. about spirituality. So if we see some of them argues that uh, countries from Scandinavia or if even, for example, uh, Japanese, they have Ikigai. And just now you, you mentioned about Lagom. I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but Hange, like this concept, which some of them argue, even without having God at the center, they achieve uh, many standards of sustainability, happiness, uh, peace and prosperity. So how, uh, from an Islamic perspective, from, uh, from a Malaysian view, that we want to say how Sejahtera would be better than those concepts? Doctor. Okay, all right. Okay, if we talk about, uh, yes, they can claim uh, that even without uh, the presence of uh, the obedience to God, yeah, the Tawhid part in the concept, they have achieved to a certain extent, yeah, to a certain extent, the standard uh, with the requirement of sustainable development. But imagine yeah, in a scenario whereby the enforcement is low, yeah, the awareness is low, yeah, and then uh, the education is low, and then the, uh, the crisis that they're in, the funding is not there, the incentive is not there. What can motivate you for you to really obey and observe and adhere the need to respect the environment, the need to respect other people? Yeah? In, for these two, remember I talk about three. Yeah? Imagine if there is no enforcement. Imagine there are certain scenarios whereby you are given a choice between you want to support the environment or your own need of economic needs. So without that component of Hablo Minamba, how do you ensure that these people, when they are tested in that conditions, if they're not tested, it's fine. If they're not facing that kind of scenario, it's fine. But the argument, the importance of this concept of Hablo Minamba is that when all those things are not present, that concept of Tawhid, yeah, that concept of obedience to Allah SWT, it will be the only thing the only intrinsic motivation, the intrinsic reason for you to actually observe all those things. Because out of SDG 17, yeah, if you talk about uh, follow, uh, 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 taking care of the environment is fine. Yeah? But if you talk about uh, SDG 16, peace, justice, yeah? equality, uh, and also like uh, poverty and hunger, that spirit of helping poor people, it will have certain limit in other countries, in other developed countries, for example. But in our case, in Islam, yeah, because of our obedience, of the, following the instruction of the religion and all those Taala, I will extend the. We go very far. I mean, in terms of helping these people. So without that kind of motivation, I'm not sure whether that concept lago Fuga would actually survive, or even it goes to that concept. So what I am trying to say here, Aslan, is that. The, the spirituality is not being strongly highlighted, though I, I, I won't deny that the, the needs of ethics and values in the SDG. But the rational, the reasons behind the ethics and values sometimes is in issues of human rights rather than issues that come from spiritual uh, motivation or issues that come from your belief, your needs to, 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 end, uh, uh, to a God. Yeah. So here, what I'm trying to say in short is that when there is no enforcement, yeah, would you imagine that this group of people can just stand alone on, on the concept of education in order for them to follow the sustainable development uh, requirement? So my answer to that is that there are occasions, yes, you can do that, but there is a limit to it. And that limit is that when the absence of those factors I was mentioning. All right, thank you. Uh, that is a comment from one of our viewers. Clear and concise explanation from Dr. Zaina. And I think uh, just thank another you. one question, maybe the last one. Uh, just now, I'm, I'm really amazed by the, the progress that has been made by Sejahtera, whereby uh, it's already in, in Korea. So some of at the rise of Islamophobia and then at the rise of uh, prejudice towards uh, Muslims and Islam as a religion, uh, how actually, uh, you know, I understand that we want to export this Sejahtera yeah. concept to, to the entire world. Uh, so how actually this is not being looked as Islamization project or it trying, to, trying to Islamize people rather than we want to offer them solution and, and fulfill the void that people have. 
uh, in their spirituality, maybe. Doctor. Okay, Azlan, this is a very, this is a question that I face almost every day. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because when we talk, um, every day means when I talk to the non-Muslim, they do have this 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 concern. Yeah, uh, it, not concern, but they do have this this questions. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Here, that, that is why here instead of putting directly the word uh, Islam uh, uh, in our approach is that we put the word sejahtera because we believe that. Within that sejahtera, in our context, there's a very strong foundation of Islamic teaching inside it. Yeah, so it depends on the audience that we're in. Yeah, uh, now I assume in our audience now is very, very, very multiracial, very multi-religious. Yeah, so what I try my best to highlight just now is that we are not discriminating any religion, and we are not Islamizing the SDG, because to me, I believe in the ideas that. Islamicness, so called, yeah, uh, is not on the labeling, right? It's on the values, on the purpose of it. That's why I put the makosid, but I don't use the word makosid sharia. I use the word the, the, the necessity of human being, the five necessity of human being, which is makosid sharia. But the way that we project, the way, sorry, the way that we put the argument, if we have a, a, a multilateral audience, a multi, multi audience, is that it should not uh, be seen as one particular effort of certain effort of like trying to specifically for certain things. Yeah, This is, um, remember the word Rahmatan Alami is very critical, it's very fundamental. Yeah, Islam is not just for Muslim, Islam for everyone. But how do you suit them with them? Yeah, It's not for our intention to Islamize them, to convert them to Islam, no. Yeah, you, to, to some people may, and then towards the end, inshallah, we want to bring them to Islam. but. In the first place, when we do this preaching, when we do this interaction, it should not be projected as a first message. And we should be very sensitive. And that's what Islam is. We make sure that we are harmony with the people. And that hablu minallah, sorry, hablu minan nas, that nas is not necessarily Muslim. So that's why the tactical part, the operational part, is very, uh, it has to be very smartly done so that we know who are our audience. The selections of words is very important as well. Yeah. So I guess that explains a bit uh, the last question. But inshallah, I mean, this is slowly our effort of showing that Islam is for rahmat and the alami, inshallah. Thank you so much, Dr. Zainal. Actually, we have a very Thank limited you. time, but we have a very interesting question from our audience, uh, ah. Brother Muhammad Amin Mubarak. I think he asked oh, some okay. uh, very, very strong questions here. He, he said, our current world order favors a rich minority. Achieving sustainable development means that we need a serious reform of our system for example our trading rules and for the power to give up some of their power if we have a wrong economic drivers we are never going to meet the sdgs goals so he is asking how can we overcome this this like is he is asking for a roadmap oh he is <laughs> asking for another one hour of explanation <laughs> but i mean I, let me put in a practical aspect yeah that is why when when the belanjawan yeah in, in our context when the belanjawan is being announced the word sejahtera to me i mean the, the, the inclusion of sdg into the belanjawan as one of the important budget allocation is that we want to change the development paradigm the development framework i agree with amit that development framework is need to be corrected so on the ground, what we do now is, I mean, as, as a center, as a what we go to the ground is that we go to 10 uh, constituencies to, to see how is the development model actually. And we realize that there's seriously something that needs to be corrected. The way that development is seen as only for the T20, we know this concept, yeah? T20, M M40, and P40. The development framework and approach is somehow can be seen as a, a bit too skewed, a bit biased towards the T20 or the M40 bottom, yeah? So what needs to be changed? What do I think is what, the, 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 what needs to be done is that, yes, I would agree. The big change needs to be done radically and drastically in terms of our way we define development, way we approach and promote development agenda. And even the definition of growth itself is not GDP. Bhutan is talking about GNH. So this is the kind of thing that go aligned together with uh, SDG. And this is what SDG is about. Yeah, trying to challenge and change the current way because the current way is the one that leads us to unsustainable development. So if you use like what Einstein says, yeah, it's, it's insanity. If you want to get a different result, you do it the same way. 
So I'll stop there. It's going to be another like one hour session. Thank you so that. much. Thank Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there was a very good discussion. I guess uh, many of uh, the points needs more elaboration. And of course, this needs some time to be digested and understood well. And I would like to invite all the viewers to join my CSO empowerment program where they internalize, they ap uh, apply this kind of uh, knowledge and concept in, in the planning and, and also in achieving these goals. It is going to happen on 15, 16 and 17 uh, of uh, November. You can go straight to the uh, uh, web site there stated at the screen launch, launchgood.com slash mycso2020. Thank you so much, Dr. Zainal, for thank you, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you, uh, Aslan. Good the, moderator. Wisdom and, and the knowledge. Uh, we learned a lot. We want to continue. Hope one day we can meet in person. Inshallah. Inshallah. Maybe. Yes, definitely. I would love to meet you, Aslan. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. We'll see you. Uh, Inshallah. Yeah, Inshallah. Right. Inshallah. Thank you so Bye. much. Peace. So we was, uh, for the next Wa For the next session, we're going to have three parliamentarians, which uh, are going to talk about some very important issues. Stay tuned. We're going to have break, a very short break, a sh short break, about five to ten minutes. We'll be back very soon. Uh, please share this uh, live telecast, uh, a Facebook Live, and this uh, page to your friends, relatives, and uh, to your to your colleagues, so that we can uh, spread this word and awareness together. Thank you so much. See you again in a few minutes. Assalamualaikum.